we get excited when it comes to the fans on the fan favorite segment where we discuss international football with regards to the European League fixtures. Remember Atletico Madrid playing Juventus tonight in the friendly final and of course Liverpool beat Norwich last night 4-1, 5 goal thrill and you know Liverpool uh, really starting on a good note with regards to their title challenge is concerned. Norwich and Liverpool fans saying that it was a tie between the champions because UEFA Champions League winners in Liverpool against championship winners in Norwich City. It's the fan zone and we're getting started. Joe Saina, how have you been? Long time, man. Yeah, I've been all right. How have you been? You don't love African football because you're in Africa. You're going Afcon to start this again. in Egypt yes. and I didn't no, I was, see I, you. No, no, I was, I was doing backstage. I was doing backstage <laughs> press. Backstage uh, press? Backstage press, yes. And Eno Kibet. Nice Jay-Z, man. Yeah, yeah. Team Portugal. <laughs> Team Portugal. Yeah. Because of Ronaldo factor? No, no, no. I just <laughs> love Portugal since, since Ronaldo and also their former number seven. Anderson Deco, Luis Figo. Yeah, those big <laughs> names. Big names. Yeah. Fred Openda is also oh. still with us, really celebrating about Arsenal signings. Do you think this time round you'll finish? Of course, I can't say you'll win the league because no, you no. can't, but you'll finish in <laughs> top three. No, why are you saying we can't? <laughs> we can't, but that's not our target. What's your target? We, we just want uh, to come back to Champions League football, uh, and that's, that's our, basically our target. We've made uh, some uh, good sign, uh, signings. To strengthen Mali, to look what Naitajika could strengthen. The defense. The defense, we've, we've got a, a very good uh, young man in TNA. We've got Saliba, although he's gone back on loan. We've got uh, David Luiz, who has a lot of experience in that back line. And then Holding is coming back from injury. Bellerin is coming back from injury. So I, I think maybe in the next, uh, in the next two months, uh, we'll be uh, full strength in that back line. And we got Acebalos uh, who can uh, maybe bench Ozil sometimes. Uh, we got a very, very good winger. And this is uh, a, 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 a position that Anai Emery has been missing uh, f since he came to Arsenal. He has never had a proper winger. But right now we got a good signing in Pepe. Hopefully he can uh, be able to deliver uh, on the high expectations that we are having. So uh, I think uh, going forward, let's see how he juggles tomorrow's team. Uh, I hear Ozil will not be uh, will not be involved and Kolasinac mm -hmm. because of the incidents of uh, the robbery incidents that uh, uh, took place earlier in, uh, when we came back from uh, the US uh, USA tour. So they, definitely that will be giving uh, other uh, uh, players a, uh, a chance. Uh, I think Sebalos might be able to start and uh, maybe Mondril, because right now TNA is still injured, mm -hmm. uh, maybe able to start in that left back, and maybe our guy who scored a very, very awkward uh, own goal against Barcelona <laughs> last week, maybe uh, that's the only one we have who can start in that um, uh, right back. So hopefully in the next two weeks, We'll have a, a full strength uh, squad, but let's see what happens tomorrow against Newcastle. I've been having an argument on the best beneficiaries of transfer window, whether it's Everton or Arsenal, because Everton has roped in some quality players, bringing uh -huh. in the likes of Juventus, Wanda Kid in Moise Keane. He was racial abuse now coming, joining English Premier League football with this age and promising career football-wise and, you know, starting to feature prominently in the national team of Italy. Just a few exceptional players, one Marco Silva has signed and I think my choice is Everton. But what do you think about who's been stand out in terms of player acquisition? I think uh, for me, um, in attack would be Arsenal in any team the Premier League right now because not only the partnership between Lacazette and Aubameyang, the addition of Pepe will also give you know a, a bigger range. You remember last season uh, Aubameyang and Lacazette scored a combined 50 goals in the Premier League. So now you add Pepe, it's going to be something brilliant. Unfortunately, they have you know they have to work on the defensive end because yes, bringing in David Luiz, he's a ball playing defender. Is he, is he the one who's going to lead that back line? Is he the one who's going to tell Mustafi or Kolasinac that, you know what, you need to don't go forward? And when he goes forward, will we have a defensive midfielder to cover him? Because remember, his game is mostly ball playing. That's for attacking. For defensive, again, I can't, I can't, I can't say that Harry Maguire is in the same league as Virgil van Dijk. But Manchester United needed to fill that gap. 
and I believe that. But do you think Harry Maguire was the best bet? He was a rush bet. He, he was not 80 million pounds, obviously. If 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 Maguire is Koulibaly 80 million, would have been better. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, exactly. If, <laughs> if uh, Maguire is 80 million, Koulibaly is easily 150. Did, did you hear the, 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 the comment by the Napoli president? Yes, I had, <laughs> I had, I had, I had. That's what I'm saying. He he was not he's not 80 million. He, 60 million, 50 million. Yeah, that, yeah. that is okay. 80 million is a bit too much. But now with the backing of one Bisaka, Lindelof, and now Luke Shaw. And with the return of McTominay and, and, Matic, and Matic, it can offer a buffer for that middle part. Unfortunately, when the counters start coming up and they are playing a high-press game, they'll be caught on the counter-attack because Maguire is not the fastest. But Your show is very slow. We know, well, we know, well, we know, uh, we know, we know, we know. <laughs> it was a statistic, are, it was a bad statistic. We are giving priority to English Premier League because uh, it already started last night. Mm -hmm. But in terms of English Premier League football, in terms of signings, Manchester City and Liverpool were not involved much in transfers because they already have Polish squads. Actually, they have a few fringe players whom they wanted to release. They didn't, uh, they, ne they, they needed exits and like, mm -hmm. you know, arrivals. But... For the teams that really were desperate uh, to sign players and uh, they needed, you know, to bolster a few departments in their squad like Man United, they have been closely associated with almost everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Mandzukic, at some point, Fernando Lorente, I laughed off, uh, you know, Bruno Fernandes, the Sporting Lisbon midfield, uh, Dynamo, <laughs> Yuri Tielemans, he extended, actually signed contract signed, with Leicester yeah, yeah, officially yeah. because he was there on loan from Monaco. W which captured your moment? On the transfer, yes. I think it's for Manchester United with the acquisition of Maguire on Bissaka and Daniel James. And, that, and, I, and I think that Manchester United really needed Maguire. Yes, it's not 8 million, but I think it's not the one who said the market, that fee. It's the market which said that fee, saying Maguire. Maguire, let's say, is 60 million if it's that so much. And on Bissaka also, it's not just... 45 million pounds. I think Wan Bisaka is just a young young kid. He's developing his game, he's still developing a good a good British right back. But I think it is not that well. Not better than Alexander million. Arnold though. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> yeah. And also with Daniel James, a rapid winger. And as I as I said last time that his other game with just raw pace is dangerous. And his other parts of the game, his attributes will just develop. And with Liverpool and Manchester City, in the past we've seen the likes of dominating teams like Manchester United under Sarris Ferguson. They had a team which in the first in the first games you could say yes this is the first eleven for Manchester United. You know who will be who will be playing. And with Liverpool, last time they had ninety seven points. They missed on the Premier League with just one point. In Manchester City the record they have set in the last two seasons is just incredible. And I think with new signings, when you have got an established team like Manchester City and Liverpool, you don't need someone who, come, who can come in and disrupt the play of the team. The you momentum, stick to your yeah, previous formation and yeah, previous play. The harmony in the dressing room. You can bring in a new signing and it doesn't come and fit in with the playing style. And also a big ego can come and disrupt the harmony in the dressing room. And in Manchester City, Buying Rodri is, is a direct replacement with Fen for Fernandino, I think so. With Angel. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it's reaches end, end game, let's say. And Angelino is, is come back from PSV in Oven, that by back close. And Joao Cancelo from Juventus is a good And Danilo player. went to the opposite end. direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. opposite but Cancelo is a vast end player. He can play at right back, at left back, at wing back also and i think that those are good acquisition for manchester city and liverpool looking into the future they acquired Avi Elliott and also sub van de Bad. but overall the team that has captured my moment in the transfer window is everton that's because of marco silva it's got these players who players who we wanted moise keen is coming the bombing from mines coming and coming in and replacing idrissa ganage from from who, who went to paris Saint Germain. and i think also at the back, that's the problem for them. They didn't get the player they wanted to replace. Kurt because Kurt Zuma, Zuma. Yeah, moved to Chelsea. And that's the only problem. But I think overall, Marco Silva's with the players who really wanted. Yeah. How about Spurs? 
<laughs> and Mauricio Pochettino, I know he has rubbed shoulders with Daniel Levy, the uh, tycoon owner of Tottenham, because of his demands in terms of signing. He submitted hefty demands. He wanted to strengthen his squad. Ericsson at some point was linked with United. The transfer didn't materialize. But Dombele from Lyon, is he a good addition? Actually, it's a, it's a good addition. They broke their, their, their transfer record. Uh, and I think uh, him coming to that midfield, I think... Uh, they, they have a, a, had a, a good acquisition, but now they have had a, one acquisition. Is it enough to take them through the whole season? And this is what I think they signed two or three. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also yes. came yes. Right back. Yeah. At, at left back. Mm -hmm. But remember, is it enough to take them uh, through the, 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 the whole season? Remember last uh, last uh, last season they 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 performed. Uh, I can say well. <laughs> uh, uh, finishing number three. Yeah, and uh, even in uh, Champions League football getting to exactly. finals. Finish fourth, uh, I think so. yeah. yeah, finishing fourth. Yeah, so I, I, I think uh, they, they made those, uh, those uh, good acquisitions in, in um, their left back in Sesenyon. They have Ndobele. But let's, let's see how the season pans out. Let's see how the season... Because as, as we've said, you can bring in players uh, maybe expecting them to come and click directly. But it doesn't happen. Look at Sanchez at United. He's now become a fringe player and, uh, and he's the one who is earning the most uh, amongst the squad. So let's see how the season pans out and the tactics that the, the, the various coaches will be able to use. Gary Neville, the veteran United uh, player and the legend, former right back, slammed <laughs> Romelu Lukaku. Immediately his move to Inter Milan was confirmed saying that he was heavy. He was overweight. <laughs> and overweight. <laughs> Isn't that unprofessional from legends? Is it that when you are not English and you're playing for Man United, you become bad? Not only, not only Manchester United. I think if you play for any English top club team in the Premier League, there will always be that name next to you called Flop. Essentially, Lukaku is not a flop. He's a world-class player. Okay? Things did not go very well for him in Manchester United. It is what it is. I don't think it was very professional for Gary Neville to outblast uh, Lukaku regarding Lukaku as being heavy or being big or whatever it was, but he contributed last season to whatever Manchester succeeded. So reaching out to a player and actually being that a professional was just, it was a low, it was a low from Gary Neville. Obviously we hope going forward that does not happen because I believe professionally all players need the support of the fans and not blatantly just hammering them. Martial has been given number nine jersey. Will he play for the jersey now? He will, obviously. Um, I think for me, the squad depth is what will be more important. If you look at the front three of Martial, Rashford and Lingard, you look at the people who might replace them. You're looking at Sanchez in the middle again. So Sanchez is not guaranteed of a first team? No, no, no he's no, no, not. No, no, no. He's, not, he's not. So you, you but think... But yes, Lingard is, is just a team player. He's average. Well, that's the same thing you'd say about James and your signed this season. So you're looking at hungry players, players who strive for the jersey, players who strive for the success. You're not looking at players who are successful uh, on social media. You're not looking at players who are influential in their marketing brands. You're looking at proper football players. And those are the players that Manchester United wanted, and now I believe they have them. Uh, is it, is it an, uh, an Oleguna transition? Yes, it is. We keep on talking about transitions. There was a Van Gaal transition, there was Moyes, there was Mourinho, and now we have Oleguna Solskjaer. But if you look at that team, it screams pace. Very fast team. Okay, but I think it's going to be it's going to be a problem when you get those big away games, the likes of Manchester City away, Liverpool away, the Barcelona's away. It's it's a potential squad, but it's not an impactful squad. What is the fate of those one away players who really wanted themselves out of their clubs? Uh, you know, Gareth Bale at Real Madrid at some point his uh, scout wanted uh, his agent wanted him out of. Santiago Bernabeu to join Chinese league and even Wilfred Zaha, the Ivorian international, he submitted transfer request to wanting to join Everton from Crystal Palace. Now that their wishes didn't pass through, what's their fate? To start with, I think first for Lukaku, I don't think it's Gary Neville who said Lukaku was overweight. It was Lukaku who admitted that before the start of last season that he was not really up to the match fitness after the World Cup. But fitness is not being over. Fitness, yeah, he's the one who's supposed to care of his body, his, his, his well-being, I think so. And for those wanderers, let's say, not dead boots, but wanderers, to start with Zaha, 
Zaha thing now is going to be for the ownership of Crystal Palace and Chairman Steve Parish. And that's because of he really wanted. Zaha last season admitted that he wanted to prove something. He's got some unfinished business. He wanted to play for a team in the Champions League and he wanted Arsenal. Arsenal wanted him. But the value, Crystal Palace, they, they see they wanted. Let's be realistic. Like Zaha joining Arsenal. Can he get a first team place? Yeah. Yeah, he can get it. On the flank. Before Pepe came in, the Arsenal really, really needed a winger. And Zaha was the one they wanted. And now Zaha, I think, the other transfer window in the Spanish League, French League One, and Italy has not yet been closed until September 2nd. So if you really, if really want, want some move to a big team that's in the Champions League, he can, he can also make his move. And also, for Gareth Bell, I think it's Zidane who pushes for him to move out at Real. And frustrations I, yeah, from the manager. Frust yeah, frustrations from the manager. And before Zidane went out in his first in, in his in his first campaign of at Real Madrid, when he, he retired first, then he came back. He said that he wanted Ronaldo to stay and Gareth Bale to move out, and they didn't agree with Florentino Perez. And I think that's the reason why 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 Bale really doesn't fit into his system. Zidane favors Isco in his play style, and also and now this this season in the preseason. Bell has not featured so much for Real Madrid. And and just sticking with Real Madrid's tribulation, since Ronaldo left, the team has been struggling. Last season's campaign, both in La Liga and European UEFA Champions League, was not so cool for them. What what do we expect from Zinedine Zidane? He won Champions League title with the team consecutively, and he's achieved so much in his capacity as caretaker manager and full-time capacity. Now that he's come back, tough challenge, big big assignment, uh, Hercule and tough course, for him. Of course. Right now, you know, now he has to fill uh, the boots that he wore, like, uh, three, as a player, uh, yeah, not not as a player, as, as a manager, because he won uh, he won uh, he won the Champions League consecutive times. So he has to go back. Remember when Lopetegui was appointed the coach for Real Madrid, the father was crying. You, you're giving my son a job and you've taken 50 goals away from him. The 50 goals of Ronaldo, you know. So who's going to get, get those, those goals right, right now at Real Madrid? This is the question that... Uh, Karim Benzema can't. Karim Benzema can't. We, we've seen him play in the... In the, in the, the Eden Hazard, business. will he step up? He, I've watched there is an Eden Hazard uh, playing in the preseason. Uh, he's not been that. Actually, there were there were wrangles. There, there were rumors. Let's say rumors in the powers of court at, at Madrid that okay, we've brought we've brought this guy for hundred million pounds, but we've seen him play. Uh, we've seen him playing preseason, and then we, have, we 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 can't really see what he brings. What unique thing he has brought to the table. But remember, that was just a preseason, if we can put it so. The season is getting started. He scored his first uh, first goal. And it uh, was the, a classic goal. Yeah, it was a classic goal. He scored. Hope that will kick uh, head start his, uh, his, uh, his uh, Real Madrid career. But if he's not going to fill that void. Trust me, Real Madrid are going again to struggle uh, uh, this coming season, even if they have made uh, marvelous signings. It's not only a Hazard, they've made uh, around five five signings good classy signings uh hopefully uh, uh, zinadine starts uh, zinadine uh, Star, uh zidane's system will be able to uh, uh accommodate their capabilities the capabilities of these players that they have brought in if not then trust me he's not going to again he's not going to to finish this season at real madrid neymar junior is also a rebel at paris and germain he wanted to join real madrid the transfer didn't go through juventus has been actively involved in player acquisitions you know matthias delete mm. trying to bolster each of their departments aaron ramsey joining for free i think adrian rabiu also joining from paris and germain the french money backs Atletico Madrid lost Antoine Griezmann to Barcelona, but they also brought in a few good players. Uh, you know, this wonder kid who was at Benfica, what is his name? Joao Felix. Joao Felix. Felix. How, 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 how competitive will be Champions League football now that the top teams from respective uh, European countries tried to better their squads? I think again we'll you know, last season was a scare to the rest of the European um, leagues and also the teams. This is because the dominance of the Premier League teams. Um, and that dominance came in with squad depth. The likes of Man City, their squad depth. Liverpool, squad depth. 
Tottenham organization scored depth with the youth and the fact that they hadn't done any transfers. So right now, Juventus have strengthened in their defense, correct? They have gotten their man that they want to replace a, a long-term replacement. Yeah, yes, Buffon. Yes, <laughs> the Buffon. legend. Yes. You, you would see um, Atletico Madrid, again, squad depth is important for that team. For Barcelona, they have to win this Champions League. They have to. It's been long over. They, they have to because the preparations that they did last season, even Messi, you know, going to the fans and telling the fans, you know what, we are bringing this trophy back. They have to bring this trophy back. For Real Madrid, they have to win La Liga. <laughs> Zidane this season has to win the La Liga, first of all. Forget about the Champions League. Get a good quarter-final, semi-final position. Mm -hmm. Or even if it's last 16, but win the La Liga. Coming back to the Premier League, Everton, Wolves have to step up. Unfortunately, Wolves are in the, are they in the Europa League. So that means, again, there will be you know, away games on Thursday and mm -hmm. away games maybe on Saturday, which will be a problem for them. And no, no, they, 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 can't, they can't get a Saturday. They can't. They, have, they can't. They have to. It's either on a Sunday or a Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Still, mm. you have them away. You have away. two back-to-back -back away. Trust games. me, if you have, do you don't have that depth in your yes. squad? Then squad you depth is important, right. and, and that's what they have. Done. That's why because I, li I like. Because you need to play rotation. Exactly, yes. and that's why I like the way they brought in Cotuon from uh, AC Milan again to help in the attacking. Mm -hmm. Having two classic number nines in that team, you know, can help Nuno even decide to play even a four-four-two. With having those two attackers or stick to the fourth. How come somebody didn't want Neves? No club was <laughs> linked with the acquisition of Neves. I, I think the philosophy that Nuno Nuno brought into the Wolves team was that we will grow. Have faith in the system. Have faith in me as your head coach. We will grow. This season we will qualify for European. They qualify for the European League. So now the next thing is we cannot finish or maybe we won't win the European League, but we will finish at a reputable position that will make your transfer fee higher and will make your demand on our, from higher from bigger teams be greater. Now that is playing psychology to the players, telling them, you know what, you play better, you'll get a better exactly. fee that's and you'll deal. go to a, to a bigger club. Yeah. Okay. And that's the same thing Newcastle need to do right now with Steve Bruce. They lost uh, they, they lost their striker. Um, uh, Rondon has gone. Okay. Solomon. Uh, Solomon Rondon has gone. Ayosi Perez has gone. Has gone, yeah, to okay. Leicester. To Leicester City. Mm. That attack is in fringe right now. Who have they brought back? They've brought back Andy Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, f fair enough. They've brought him back. He, he was a Newcastle. He was a Newcastle legend. He is a Newcastle oh, legend, boyhood um, player. But now, can you replace, you know, Rondon with Andy Carroll again? Mike Ashley and I, I wonder sometimes he has done. He, by the way, he gave he's given Steve Bruce good money and he's bought five players in. Okay, but every one step you make somewhat three steps are made back Backwards. by Newcastle. And by virtue of them surviving last season in the Premier League, this season is going to be, is going to be tough for them. And I think even Especially when, if they play home to Norwich. When Rafael Benitez uh, was relegated with them, he promoted them back yes. to English Premier League. It was not facilitated financially to acquire quality players that would help them compete effectively mm -hmm. in English Premier League. But away from matters transfer, let's discuss about uh, the leagues that are underway this particular afternoon. I understand West Ham are taking on City mm -hmm. uh, in an early kick of tie, but tomorrow it's a crunch game. United against Chelsea. Two teams that <laughs> <laughs> we can say haven't been tipped favourites to shine this, this season. season. Yeah. Playing against each other. What are the permutations? I think uh, United playing at home. Uh, I can say with the new acquisitions in one Bizaka, they have Maguire in that defense. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe partnering uh, Lindelof, show in that left back, and then the likes of uh, McTominay. We have Pogba's there. I would really love to have uh, James playing in that game because this kid is very fast. Mm. You cannot go in for a tackle. Mm. He knows how to. Uh, get away uh, from from defenders. I, I would really love to see him uh, playing that game, and maybe Chelsea now that uh, they did not have uh, they, they, they 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 would not sign players. I would love uh, to see how how uh, Frankie mm -hmm. would be able to juggle with that defense. Uh, now that Luis is uh, has left uh, Chelsea, Rudiger is also not playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I would love how. Uh, 
to see how he'll juggle with that defense. But United playing at Old Trafford and uh, wanting to make a statement, uh, I think they, they might have the day for, for tomorrow. Yeah, sure, obviously. Mm. For me, tomorrow, for Chelsea to get a draw and not lose at Old Trafford, the two main players that will help is Kante, back in his position exactly back as, as position. defensive midfielder mm. and also Juninho helping him as defensive midfielder why because the gap that has been left by Rudiger and Luis in defense is big I'm not saying Katsuma is not, the, is not a very Rudiger good defender. Rudiger is out injured. Yeah, yeah. Rudiger is out injured. I'm not saying Katsuma is not a very good defender, okay? But if you look at that attacking pace that United are going to put in tomorrow, put a number 10 Pogba behind there, okay? You have a guy who can distribute the ball from any side, any, yeah. any, any side of yeah. any, mm -hmm. anywhere, yeah? You have Luke Shaw bombing from the left side. You have one Bisaka who can bomb forward and also still come back and tackle. And then you have the solidity of, of Maguire, and Linderoff, and obviously um, De Gea offering that, you know, uh, back bumper, you would expect that tomorrow Chelsea will either have to draw this game on a good day or lose. If Manchester United tomorrow lose, then there's, there's, there's a serious concern in that defensive mechanism. Two teams, uh, both managed by former players, Frank Lampard at the Stamford Bridge, then Oleguna Solskjaer at the Old Trafford, both won you know, several medals with their former respective clubs. That is Oleguna Solskjaer winning Champions League with the United in 1999. And even Frank Lampard did the same with Chelsea. And I think he was one of the top uh, former players at uh, Stamford Bridge, going by the words of former coach Jose Mourinho. Frank Lampard, you know, John mm -hmm. Terry, Michael Ballack, Didier Drogba. How tactically? Will they be strategic to overcome each other? I think it's a super Sunday, two legends meeting each other. And I think with Frank Lampard, let's start with the band they faced like at the start of the season. And I think it might be a good thing for them. And I think Lampard will use more of the youths in the team. Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount coming in. And also Kat Zuma was not really featured for Chelsea that much. And I think it would be a good time for Lampard to use them before they acquire some players. And with Manchester United, with the Laguna Social, he's got a new playing style at United. He wants to play from the back. He, he, needs, he has good defenders who now can play ball-playing defenders with Maguire and Lindelof. And now at the front, he's got people who play the pace. And that's why the main reason Lukaku left Manchester United is because he, he mainly plays like a target man. And... Oleguna needs a fluid front front three or front four that can switch plays or switch they can switch the positions. And I think with Daniel James coming in, I think tomorrow we start really because <coughs> so Oleguna yes. says said before said in the press conference that he will use he will use Rashford as his forward or Martial. I think that's a good front three with, with adding James and Lingard that, there. And I think now with Chelsea Chelsea, their main problem comes in in the defense. There's no a, lead, a leader or a character like Luis back there. And I think for United, tomorrow, they say you can't win the season at the start, but you can lose the title at the start. And I think with United, they have to make a statement. Oleguna has to make a statement tomorrow that yes, this is the play style the fans can associate with. This is the game that we really want. And this is how we do it in Manchester. And I think tomorrow, United really have to win. Definitely. Of course, Issa Diop, a man whom I really wanted United to sign as a defender, has had <laughs> an uncle this particular afternoon against City. And City. as we speak, City are leading Indian against Indian. West Ham. Of course, I'm just United sympathizer. <laughs> you know my team, it's Nottingham Forest. And as we speak, they also <laughs> look like it's a draw so far on 24th minute against Leeds United. This is a good championship tie. Nottingham against Leeds United. Marcelo Bielsa, we know him. His managerial mm -hmm. abilities. So, Josaina, your final thoughts as we wind up the show with regards to expectation ahead of European football. I've been uh, viewing your status and we've been <laughs> looking forward to <laughs> thrilling European football. Yes. Um, in terms of, first of all, the English Premier League, City are going to win this league again. And Liverpool, it, it's sad that Liverpool will come in second because the pressure on, uh, the pressure on City to make it a treble is the most important thing right now to them. 
I'm not disregarding the Champions League. They will put a good front against the Champions they League. They did treble already last yeah. season. No, they're going to add now the fourth one. Sorry, they're going to add now the fourth one. No, 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 the Premier League. Yes. The title the itself. The third Premier League title. Consecutively. Yes, consecutively. Three United times. United did that before. Uh, yes. So, if you, look, if you look on that, for Liverpool, all the pressure is on them now. If they didn't win the Champions League, it's fine. You wouldn't have you told them, don't win the Premier League. But now you won the Champions League. That means now, Liverpool, after 30 years, sure. again, have to start again mm. looking for that Premier League title. So I, it, will, it will be very interesting. But me, the most interesting part about the Premier League this time will be the number five and number six position. Everton, Everton. Wolves, Leicester. Look at these teams that are coming in. West, in. West Ham with the signings they have made. That number five, six position. One of these top six teams are going to be ousted this season. Arsenal, where do you expect them to finish now that uh, they have quality I, I signings, am, I, like I, you said? I am in good spirits. <laughs> <laughs> and they are you're, going to be, you're going to be scoring Sparkle. people yeah, yeah, yeah. five goals, but you're going to concede four. No problem. <laughs> 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 so I, I, I see, I see as a... And hope you watched what uh, Loroko Sienli did while he was... I don't know whether it was unveiling because uh, I saw some Jay-Z. It, it was, it was a very unique practice. unveiling. <laughs> Actually, it was pathetic. You, you, and you unprofessional. Can't, you can't, yeah, unprofessional. You can't spoil your, your legacy in um, a club like Arsenal just because of removing a jersey. You know, there, there are so many other ways you would have been unveiled. You see. So, but uh, coming back to the Arsenal team, I think we, we, we have a, a strong team now. Uh, if if I'm going to get uh, holding back fully fit and uh, having David Luiz and uh, Mustafi has been lost by day, he can he can find another club because I don't see him getting any play time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, having holding, having uh, Luiz and having Papa uh, Socrates, I think in that uh, centre half we we have good players who can who can play. So I, I I can see if if we we grind out results. We can come back to the top four. Wow, that has been a fantastic show every Saturday, one, two, three, touchline. And uh, the one we are concluding on right now is the fans on where we discuss international football fixtures, what is trending in the world of uh, football overall. And we're looking forward to thrilling action as far as English Premier League, which kicked off last night. And remember this particular afternoon, various fixtures. Let's continue talking and discussing. And the hashtag, touchline Y254 to Wasike Maxwell at Y254 channel. Let's keep up with the conversation even as we wait for tomorrow's pulsating clash. Chelsea Football Club against Man United. Le legends playing against each other. Frank Lampard against Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We'll blink fast. Stay tuned. Don't go away. We do it again six, Saturday, same time, same place. Have a fantastic afternoon. God bless and keep it sporty. <laughs>